Hi everyone at home, my name's Amy and we thought that we would bring our Keeper Talks to your screens. Today we're going to be meeting the gorillas. I'd like to introduce you to our beautiful family group of Western Lowland Gorillas here at Melbourne Zoo. We have Otana, our silverback, who's 19 years old. We have Kimya, who is 15. She's mum to our little Kanzi, who is five years old. And we also have Yushka, who's going to be turning 50 at her next birthday. It's going to be quite a monumental time. Now they are such an interesting group of animals to observe. Now with our incredible Atana, when he first arrived here at Melbourne Zoo, he was actually a blackback. So that silverback is something that develops over time. It's a hormonal shift. And he did show the signs to be a fantastic leader. Now something really quite amazing with Atana is he has a type of communication that we can't see, but we can smell. So silverback gorillas communicate with scent. Now I'm sure that there might have been some times that you visited Melbourne Zoo and you smelt this incredible sort of strong musky scent. That's our Atana. Now the purpose of this scent communication serves a couple of different roles. Now to explain that, if we think a little bit about the natural habitat the Western lowland gorillas live in, it's densely vegetated, which means that they can't always see each other, but it also means that they can't always see when there's other gorillas approaching. So if there's members of a family group in a particular area and they can't see each other, this dominant male can gently emit this scent to let the rest of his family group know that he's there, he's nearby, and they're safe. Now, in addition to scent communication, there's other types of really fascinating communication that happens between Western Lowland Gorillas also. And one of those things that we've been able to observe is when little Kanzi was born and as she was growing older, this amazing white tuft of fur that you might see on a young gorilla just above her tailbone. When a young gorilla is born, this tuft of fur is about the size of my hand span. So if we take a moment to think about why that might be a useful communication device. A mother gorilla has all black fur. Their baby is also all black which makes it difficult to be able to see that little young one that she might be nursing. So having that big white tuft of fur at the base of her back is a visual cue to other gorillas that she's got a little young one there. Now, as that gorilla starts to get older, that tuft of fur starts to get smaller and smaller until eventually it disappears. But during that time that they have that white tuft of fur, it's almost like having gorilla L plates. So it's an indication to the rest of the gorillas in that family group that this little one is quite young. She hasn't quite worked out social etiquette within that gorilla hierarchy just yet. So they give her a little bit more lenience there. So she might run up to her dad and snatch food out of his hands or out of his mouth, but he will sigh and give her a lot of patience there. But now once that spot disappears, so does the patience, because by that stage, that gorilla should be old enough to know what is appropriate behavior. Now, our little Kanzi has recently lost that little spot. She's a lovely young woman now. She does seem to like being the center of attention still. You can hear her clapping back there. <laughs> but it's really important that we keep that active mind of hers and the rest of our gorillas here as stimulated as possible. So with all of our animals here, particularly our primates at Melbourne Zoo, it's important that we keep them engaged with this idea of enrichment. Now you've probably heard of enrichment before. It basically means any form of physical or mental stimulation that encourages wild behaviors and problem solving. Now with the gorillas, that enrichment will take the form of, perhaps when we feed them, we'll do something like a scatter feed, which involves literally throwing food far and wide around their enclosure so that they can forage for it as they would in a natural environment. 
So our conservation program where we're helping to save the Western lowland gorillas and working with the gorilla doctors is called They're Calling on You. You can find out more about that on our website. Thank you so much everyone, have a lovely day. Thank you.